We took over the naval ports again. We are now moving to an environment in which uh, the mission, funny enough, is not a repeat of Mission 5 in the first campaign. Huh. Instead, it's a remix of Mission 8 from that campaign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Got them. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, chase after some stragglers that are trying to leave the combat zone and just and just murder <laughs> them outright. I think that's a war crime. I'm fairly certain that's a war crime. Don't worry about it. No, no, that's that's certainly a war crime. So this one, I could at least uh, give like some behind the scenes kind of like insight to when I was recording this mission. This took quite a while to get right because, uh, especially with how this is during the second campaign and not the first, it very much feels like the sort of thing where it's like, like it's uh, like the ideal kind of units you want to use on this are the ones that can equip like the absolute biggest like most surefire single hit powerful weapons possible stuff like a railgun or the AS missile we're using the the Gerlax C model which uh, its unique feature is that it has a melee weapon that is permanently fixed to the to the first sidearm slot the cut B it's a cutter boom it also got some fire stuff like napalm and whatnot but the thing is is like this is basically this unit loaded out to be as most powerful and varied in weapons as possible. And it still took me a couple tries in order to be able to, like, efficiently kill all of the enemies before even one of them got outside of the combat zone. Because mm. you're going to see it eventually. It's like, as I, uh, because I don't have something like the railgun or the missiles, like... It takes quite a bit more hits and like running around in order to catch up with these guys and get to and, and get to all three groups. Does this one have like if they get to this point the mission is over or is it still just the time limit? Uh yeah, it's like if they cross the red line on the uh on the on the edge of the map, you get a mission fail. <laughs> Which is a completely different fail condition compared to just ejecting. Because what it does is that during the campaign you actually keep your VT if you get a mission failure. So that saves you some supply points. Here's a track from Armored Core Verdict Day. <laughs> I, going I recognized it. Yeah, going through something a bit different than just anime tracks. Because I decided it's like... This is the fight that plays during the uh, the final boss of Verdict Day, which yeah. is like the big Frankenstein uh, version of White Glint. That fight is awesome, by the way, and is also <laughs> hell, because it is... Like, I remember when I finally played through that, it felt like a relief to have, like, an actual Armored Core boss fight again that knew how to kick my ass. Yeah. And since we're the ones doing all the ass kicking, I figured this was an appropriate music track. See, I've, I've never been particularly good at the Armored Core games, but I love the music in them. Um, yeah. 4 and 4 answer are absolutely brilliant soundtracks, even though, like, stuff like Precious Park does not belong in a mech game. Honestly, I am very kind of not that fond of 4 and 4 answers music, <laughs> just because <laughs> of, like... Like, I could probably be more accepting of that music if 4th if Gen uh, Armored Core wasn't so garbage, mm -hmm. like, in terms of everything else. It's, but, like, I, but at least with this uh, track, like, I feel like it kind of <coughs> redeemed the, the part of 4 and 4 Answer that had potential, which was the whole legacy of White Glint. Oh, yeah. Because this, this is a remix of, hit, uh, of White Glint's theme from 4 Answer. And it is like way more action packed and kind of fitting for like, especially for what that fight ends up being. Yeah. So I quite liked four in four answer. My only problem was that they were just too washed out. They were too piss easy. And That's like probably way, why I liked them. and way too <laughs> slippery and clumsy for the kind of mecha game that they wanted to be, which FromSoft had already proven that they could do already. It's called another centuries episode. <laughs> Yeah, it did like feel there, like, like there are dozens, 
there are dozens of anime themed like fast paced mecha games that do the kind of shit that 4 tries to do but better freaking Damon X Machina does Armored Core 4 better than Armored Core 4 still need to get hold of that it's great. I mean, you can get it on PC now, which means you have unlimited frame rate as opposed to the 30 FPS average on Switch. Yeah. But here's what I was talking about. Even with my best run, the there's already one unit that's past the orange line, which, like, fortunately it does not fail the mission when they pass that, but you cannot pass it go past the orange line whatsoever. I have no idea why it treats it like that, why you can't just go over that line and have the game just tell you, hey, you're out of bounds, go back. Because red yeah. is the hard limit, but that just makes it... Like, if you go in with the wrong weapons and they're too far enough past the, the orange line, you're shit out of luck in terms of effective range. Mm. So it's fortunate that I was able to book it over there just fast enough that, like, my regular weapons, like the machine gun and, whatnot, and whatever, could even reach it. That is really weird, because, like, pretty much every game of this type, the orange line is the boundary warning. Yeah, it's like they have like the idea of like a soft and hard border that yeah. applies to the player. But yeah, in this case, this it's a soft, it's a soft border. Game. Yeah, it's a soft border for the enemy, but it acts as a hard border for you, which makes no freaking sense. That is dumb as hell. Yeah, it's even dumber than the whole effective range system, where anything that goes outside of the effective range counts as zero damage. Also, but that... at least that has a more positive benefit because of it's supposed to teach you hey shoot within your effective range use your weapons at the ranges that make the most sense for it also that cutter weapons like if going the guy did good and lagging jesus christ <laughs> yeah yeah it's basically our actual plasma drill hurricane <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like that is fucking terrifying yeah and and, and that's so cool and again it's always fixed to that to the C model of the Gerlach. Hence why it's called the C model, because C is for close quarters. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm going to say I'm okay with that for once. Yeah. That said, though, there's a mission later on where I do feel like I should have used this there and switched out the one that I used later for here, which is the Behemoth. But you'll see why two missions from now. <laughs> 